grace, mercy, peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Our focus for this evening is on the third verse of Psalm 23 as we examine this treasure that many of us have come to know and love and even memorize that gives us comfort, especially at times of distress and death. And to specifically look at, at this one specific section, verse 3, where the Good Shepherd sa says that he renews my life, he leads me along the right paths for his namesake, as we consider renewal and purpose. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Holy Spirit, be in my lips and in the ears and hearts of everyone present that we may all hear a good word from you. Amen. I'll bet that if I ask you to walk into your house and find 10 items that you see as personal treasures, it wouldn't take you too long, right? You'd be able to, be able to pick out several items that you would say, this is something that has uh, some meaning attached to it for me. It may not be worth anything to anybody else, but it, it, it's important to me. It has some sentimentality attached to it. And so I did that at my office because I think sometimes it's good to take out our treasures and re-examine them because there are always things that we miss. And so I've got this picture of my son and I, and the thing that surprised me about this not only is how much dust gets on pictures very easily, right? <laughs> that happens pretty quickly, but this was taken when he was a lot shorter. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but he's up to about here on me, and now he's up to be about here. So how quickly our kids grow up, and I've always loved that picture of him holding on to my hand as a little guy, but to, to see the, the difference in, in height and growth is, is pretty striking. Another treasure I, I happened upon is this little commemorative coin that a friend gave me. It's from the first night game at Wrigley Field, and it's got a picture of Wrigley on the front with the lights up on top. And I didn't realize this until I started examining it, but the first night game was on 8-8-88. Some of you probably knew that already. Forgive me for being late to the party, but that's something I noticed because I picked this back up. And last but not least, I've got this statue that used to, to sit in my, my room uh, when I was really young. I, I don't ever remember a time when this was not in my room. I believe it was made out of olive wood and, and brought from the Holy Land from a relative or a friend. And if you, unless, if you can't see it, it's a picture. It's a, a statue of the Good Shepherd, Jesus holding a lamb. And not only did I notice the kind of grain of the wood on the back, which I had never noticed before, but I came upon something that uh, I, I thought was kind of sentimental. It's got my name on the bottom of it. So I would never forget that this is my good shepherd and he belongs to me and I belong to him. And that's a really good thing. So all that to say, there, there's so many treasures that we have that unless we pick them up and examine them, we lose the meaning or the understanding or something we missed about them. That it's good to examine and pick back up and to find life and energy and vitality through it. And I think Psalm 23 is just one of those treasures of the church that unless we pick it up and tightly examine it, it becomes just something that we rush through or that we hear and have some sentimental attachment to at funerals. But the, the message of it that is so life-giving can be lost on us. And so... Uh, a couple weeks ago, we started talking about the, the Good Shepherd being our Lord and giving us kingly gifts, giving and giving and giving out of his abundance, out of his royal wealth. Last week, we talked about how easy, uh, how difficult it is for sheep to lay down in pasture. That's almost impossible without the shepherd creating the conditions for them. And our Good Shepherd does that. Not only does he create the conditions where we can lie down, but he also leads us to waters that are, are not going to sweep us away, but are going to hydrate us spiritually for walking with him. And so today we turn our, our eyes and our hearts to the third verse. He renews my life, and he leads me along right paths for his name's sake. Now, I'm guessing some of you will look at that translation, that's the Christian Standard Bible, and say, I've heard a different word in that first section. He renews my soul. 
And again, different translators use different words, for the, but the same Hebrew word holds true. The word is nephesh. And it's a word that can be used for soul or life or being or self, among other things. What does it mean to have our, our being restored? Now, I'm guessing that if you're like me and a lot of people in our society, we are feeling drained and hollowed out. That we, that a renewal of our self, of our soul, of our life, of our very being would be very much welcome at this time. You ever feel like you're so run ragged that you feel like you have to sit in one place for long enough just to let your soul catch up to you? I think that's a really good picture. Someone gave that to me recently. Sometimes you just have to sit still long enough to let your life catch up with you, to let your soul catch up with you, to restore those things back together. Because I'm guessing if you look back on your life in the past couple days, you can observe how whether emotionally or mentally or even physically, you've been all over the place. So one of the reasons why we come and gather like this is just to be renewed. For God, to let God renew our lives, our nephesh. And I think there's a connection here also to the way that shepherds handled their flocks. So the 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 psalmist, the one who wrote most of our psalms, was well accompanied or, or well, um, had, had a great deal of understanding about sheep and animal husbandry and taking care of, of sheep specifically, David the shepherd. And he had, had an understanding of what it looks like when a sheep gets cast down. I didn't know that this was a technical term until recently, but it is a sheep getting cast down. We see this come up in Psalm 42, where, where David says, don't be downcast, O my soul. So what is it when our, our souls get downcast? Well, it closely mimics what happens when a sheep goes off by itself and finds a nice little spot, a nice little hollow in the ground where it can lay down for a little while. And on, by on its own, that's not too bad of a thing. We want sheep to be able to lay down and rest. But what happens if it sits there too long? It starts to fall over. <laughs> and in an attempt to rescue itself, it can go even further until, what do you know, it's feet in the air and can't move and can't rescue itself. It's stuck in a spot, and I'm guessing you can imagine that the other sheep are not going to be of much help to that sheep who's stuck in that hollow where it used to be comfortable but now it's legs in the air and all of the the energy that it may have had in those legs is starting to drain from it the only one who can save that sheep is the good shepherd this animal would die without the shepherd's care and this is why it's not a far stretch for Jesus to tell the parable of the good shepherd who goes after that one sheep, who counts all the sheep at the end of the day and says, I've got 99, I'm supposed to have 100. Because chances are there's a sheep out in the field somewhere who hasn't been able to come back to the rest of the flock and the shepherd because it's got its feet in the air, circulation cut off, not going anywhere, and easy pickings for any predator that might be in the area. And so one of the first things that a shepherd might do in the morning is to look at the sky and see if there are buzzards circling because it's a sign that there could be a sheep in distress out there. The good shepherd goes after that one sheep, goes to the place where the most desperate need is, and sometimes carries it on its shoulders to get it away from predators, but will also often stand the sheep up as it starts to regain its footing and gently massage the legs so that the circulation starts to kick back in and it can walk on its own. Because you know what happens when you try to walk around after your leg is asleep, right? You wobble around, you might fall down. Happens to sheep too. And after all of that is taken care of and the sheep is restored to the flock, the shepherd does one more thing. Quite often, the, the culprit is the mass of wool on the back of the sheep. 
and the shepherd shears the sheep so that that mass of, of wool that has weighed the sheep down doesn't stop, doesn't cause it to fall over. You know, my friends, I just realized I said I was going to take this off, right? Huh. Silly me. Sorry about that. Maybe you can hear me better now. Okay. We'll keep going. So sometimes the shepherd sees the mass of, of wool on, on the sheep, and it's, it's matted, or it has manure in it, or it has any number of things that weigh it down. And while this beautiful coat of, of wool, or maybe not so beautiful, maybe the glory of the sheep, it's not good for it when it tries to get around. And it makes it top-heavy so it's easier for it to topple over. And so the, the shepherd shears the sheep, not just to gain the wool, but also to give the sheep its life back. It has to remove its glory and its pride so that it's able to skip along the hills. And I think there's a lesson to be learned in that. Too often we can become complacent in the places where we find comfort. And we start to get a little lazy and we fall over. And the weight of our pride and our own desire to, to have standing on our own stops us from being able to follow after the good shepherd. But he puts us on our feet, massages our legs, and shears us of the things that we think give our, ourselves glory. And he says once again, come, follow me. Not very nice, doesn't feel good always. And I've been told that shearing a sheep is, is tricky business and not very pleasant either for the shepherd or the sheep, but it's good. Nobody likes to have their faults pointed out. And yet it's one of the most restoring things that God can do for us so that he can then lead us to the places of restoration where our souls are restored to us. So that's the first part of this verse. He renews my life. He renews my soul. The second part, he leads me along right paths. He leads me in the ways of righteousness, of right relationship with him and with others for his name's sake. And this is shepherd speak for, he's not going to lead me to the places that are well-worn, but he's going to lead me to new places that are going to be better for me. A good shepherd knows that it's not good for the land and it's not good for the flock for those sheep to be in one spot for too long. It's going to impoverish the land. Those sheep are going to gnaw the, that, those bits of grass down to the roots and impoverish the land and destroy it. And the sheep are, on the other hand, at the same time, going to receive less nutrients from that grass because it's not going to be good grass. And so a good shepherd leads his flock to different places at different times. An attentive shepherd will see that moment where a, an area of pasture becomes less helpful for the sheep and will move it on. But there's always got to be one stubborn one, right? There's always got to be at least one that wants to go its own way no matter what. Shepherd says, go over here. Sheep wants to go over there. Isaiah talked about this in, in Isaiah 4. 53 verse 6 says we all went astray like sheep we all have turned to our own way and the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all he's punished the good shepherd for the sins of the sheep we want to go and do our own thing we think we know better than the shepherd he says come on over here this is good grass and we say I want the nasty brown grass over there that's not going to satisfy me and yet when we get ourselves in those places, we have a good shepherd who pursues us and gives us our lives back and restores us to the fields he wants us to go to. And so as we think about what that might mean in having a restoration not just of life, but also having a purpose in this life, I know sometimes God's going to send us into places and spaces that don't feel comfortable to us. Sometimes he's going to send us into places that we don't necessarily want to go or we wouldn't choose for ourselves. And yet, 
when we follow him to the places where he's leading us, we find great purpose in this life that he's given us. So the question for you I want, to, want you to think about is how is God leading you into new fields, into new spaces, and will you go? Will you go and follow him when he says, spend a little more time with your neighbors or your coworkers? I know it's kind of hard to do during a pandemic, but what does it look like to reach out in some sort of healthy human way and love the people around us? It's going to take some time. It's going to take some work. We've been talking about this joining Jesus idea of joining Jesus in our neighborhoods and the places where we live and work and play. And I've observed there have been a couple opportunities as of like late for me to connect with my neighbors who live on my cul-de-sac. Maybe you have neighbors that live around you that you get to see every once in a while. And I think sometimes, most of the time, it's just a simple wave. It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm friendly. Maybe I don't have time to talk right now. Maybe you get caught in that. I know I do. I've really got to get this thing done, so I don't have time right now. But every once in a while, I bump into one of my neighbors, and we have a good talk. I don't try to force myself. I don't go in and knock on their doors every few days to see if they're okay. I'm sure they, they wouldn't mind that. But I look for simple ways where they're available and I'm available. And we just talk. We just chat. We see how things are going. Talk about the good stuff. Talk about the bad stuff. And in, in that way, I'm starting to understand that the Good Shepherd is leading me into fresh pastures. And it's a little scary because I haven't been there before. And I'm guessing if you do the same thing that it doesn't always feel comfortable or nice. And yet God didn't lay his life down on the cross so we could stay comfortable. And who wants a life without any adventure? Sure, there are adventures that involve a lot of danger, but are there some adventures that we should be willing to, to take on? And living life with other people, caring about the folks around us, even if they may be different than us, and quite often are, that's an adventure worth having. But when you take a step back and realize this is where your good shepherd is leading you, it's not that much of an, an adventure at all. He's not sending you to a place where he hasn't already been. The good shepherd leads you to new fields that you can be not just well fed, but he also empowers you with his spirit to shepherd others towards rest and restoration. One more thing before we finish up. I want you to think once again about the, the treasures in your life. Whether it's a little knick-knack on a shelf or a little statue of something, a picture of something. Re-examining it. I want you to think about your life itself as a treasure. And take a moment this, this evening, tomorrow maybe when you get a chance, and examine it. Think about it. Take a good look at it. Think about how God can use it to grow others for the kingdom. And in that, I think you'll find not only renewal, a renewal of purpose, but also the, the thing that you were made for, to love those around you like Jesus first loved you. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we all long to have our lives renewed and given back to us whole. We often get complacent, we get into places that seem good to us and yet can lead to, to brokenness and the leeching away of our lives. And yet you long to renew us, to have full lives, not just here, but for all eternity. We pray that as we follow you to the places where you're leading us, especially the places that are not known very well to us, that you would renew our purpose as well that you would remind us that you are a good shepherd, not just to let us be your sheep, but that you also call us to be shepherds to those around us. Give us opportunities, fill us with your spirit, and teach us to love like you do. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, the good shepherd, and all God's people. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, which goes far beyond what our heads can understand, keep your hearts, your minds always in Christ Jesus. Amen.